Good evening. Um, I was supposed to be down with work uh, further down south tonight, but uh, we've got a lot of snow here at the moment in Scarborough, so we're not snowed in, but we're not far off at the moment. Um, so instead, I decided to start doing a playthrough of Final Girl. Now, some of you will know that I went to the States recently and came back with quite a lot of games. And a big chunk of those were the Final Girl games you get. You buy the core box, you can't actually play the game just with the core box there. So you get that and that's your base game. I've, it's got some boards in here, but I've, I've got it pimped up because I also got a couple of mats while I was out there, because you've got to. And I've got some uh, miniatures, which if I just lift that up a little bit, you can see two of them up there. Okay, just paint it up. Just struggling to get everything in. So with each, the, the games that come with it, the, the expansions as it were. That one's Poltergeist. The Haunting of Creature Man. They're all based on movies, and um, the base one that I've been playing is called Camp Hatti Happy Trails, as you can see there, um, which is based on Friday the 13th, and oh, they're so addictive, these games. They're so such good fun. Now, I'm going to do the setup and talk through things as I'm going, because I've... Although I do seem to have mislaid one of the boards somewhere. No, I haven't. I've picked them both up in one. Because um, each side of the board, the box itself, opens out into boards. So I've just laid them out. So now you've got the play board, Camp Happy Trails. So that's where it takes place on a... Um, Holiday camp, as they call it in America. And then you've got the killer board. And the killer, again, this game is Hans the Butcher, who wears a, a pig type mask. Got a little miniature of him here as well, so that'll be going on the board in a bit. I have painted those, I'm not the best painter in the world, but I quite enjoy doing it. That's how we start with that. I'm just going to read through the setup as I'm going because I don't want to miss anything out and there's there is one phase of the game the panic phase which I do have a habit of forgetting so hopefully I'll I won't do that as we're playing so one other thing with each box you get two heroes um which we'll talk about in a minute this one's Laurie and we'll get her card out in a moment you can mix and match with those so when I'm playing one of the other games, I can put the other um, heroines in that game. So you, so you can do that. But the games are really thematic, as hopefully you'll see as we play through this. It's really, as I said, I'm really enjoying it. Um, so where are we? So we've got the we've got the boards out. And the reason you best to start with Camp Happy Trails, by the way, as well is. It just uses the base rules. All the other games have some sort of variant. I've not actually used them yet, but I know this case. So um, this is the one they advise to learn with. Although hands is very difficult to beat. I've played three times and I've got close to winning once. The other two times I got slaughtered. Um, so we've got the game board. The six dice, which we'll talk about them later. I'm going to put them off to one side. I need to find a place to put them because as you can see I'm just struggling to get everything on the board but um, we're just about there with it. Uh, da, da, da. The action cards which you take out of the core box and you select these each turn. The ones that are zero cost that's your starting hand. I'll talk more about these as we go in. So I'm going to put them there, the zero cost action card bit. You see, and then these go here. And you can see each one has different costs. Some you have two of, some like long rest. You can see there's only one card. Uh, 
critical blow, that's the strongest one. I don't think I've actually even had that card in my hand yet. Fury Strow, which is a, another good one for attacking hands. Retaliate, so you can hit back when hands attacks you. And planning allows you to have extra dice. So that's those. You know, you can't quite see them, but you're not far off. So there's your cards. And these will be the starting hands, so I'll just move those across into the play area, which I'll use down here as a starting hand. Many cards into piles, we've done that. And so the victim meeples, special victim meeples, and the three victim holding boards. Now, some of this we've already done, so there's the victim meeples. And these are our characters here, so not worry about that until we get them on. Let's just so we place the chosen killer on the table, got him there. Then place the chosen location board, done that. Now, what we've got is the killer's finale cards, which are these three here. Pick one, and we put that there. The other two just go out of the way, they're not going to be used. And we now do the same with the Dark Power cards for those. We just select one. Oh, I've just turned it over. That's not what we do. We do this. And then select it, I don't know which one. Let's have that one. So we leave it upside down. As you can see it matches the picture underneath and it stays there for now. And they get turned over. Well, they should get turned over at some point in the game. Every game I've played, they have got turned over. Take the killers, terror cards and the location cards and mix them up. Now, I've already done that because I've been playing the game. You can see that's a location card. And that is the, the uh, killer card. So I'm just going to mix them up again. And we're just going to count out 10 of these. Now this, I think, is because you can you can actually use the killer in different scenarios. I used, I've not tried, not read up on that, but I'm assuming that's, that's the case. And that's why you've got them. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal out 10 of those cards. So, Ten. And again, the other terror cards are not going to be used. And they go up here on the terror deck. Um, the location items card together. So these are the items that can help you along the way. And we deal out... Deal out 11 of those, if I'm correct. Yeah, deal out no, 12, I don't like it. Three piles of four face down cards, and then you flip it to, so you can see the item deck at the top there. And four in each pile. And the final one on each gets Flipped face up. So we've got an aluminium bat in the cabins, which are here. Tells you here where, where they are. We've got a map in the dock and a first aid kit at the utility shed. Plus, someone's an aluminium, aluminium bat deals an extra damage each time and also gets rid of a dark power. Just lift that up slightly because you can see them. And the map, you discard it during the action phase, and for each deck of item cards, if the top card is face down, you reveal it. If the top card is face up, you may remove it from the game if you don't want to reveal the next card. And the first aid kit allows you to recover an additional health every time you use an action card. So that's, that's pretty good, actually. So 
Yeah. In fact, that's very good. Uh, so we've got those. Got the item cards. We shuffle the location setup cards. And we draw one. And this shows you, you can see that matches up to the location map. Shows you where your victims are going, your starting victims. That's where the killer's going. And that's where your heroine's going, which is Laurie. So we put that there, just where I do that. That's Laurie's card. Every time she saves a victim, you put the yellow, yellow meeple on that and you get that benefit. Once you've done six, she's turned over. And whenever she's in the same space as an enemy, she inflicts damage and inflicts damage. She does an additional hit. So that's pretty good. So she's going down there. Um, and you can hardly see that, but we only need to show that as we get a victim. So there's no, no real problem with that. So where's Laura go? She goes here. Not all the locations to give them are named, but you've got the cabins, make out point. And you've got to have an adjoining line like this to be able to move. So although the cabins are next to make out point, there's no adjoining because that's on the cliff top. So you'd have to go all the way around. You can't get there quickly. So the killer, Hans, is going, starts in the lake. There we go. Let's grab a few of these and start putting these out as well. So we've got one in the utility shed. One here. One here. Ooh, there's a lot of them next to Hans here. A few near here, we've got. We need to try and save some of these. So we've got one there, two here. Now to, to save any of them, we have to get them to an exit point. You see these little points here, they're exits. So if we get them to there while we're there, they move off and they're safe. So that's when they'll go on Laurie's card. So we've got two here that we could quite fairly quickly get there. We'll talk about as the game starts. So the other setup cards aren't used. Now we've got the nine black final health tokens. And we need one of those for hands and our final girl. And they go like that. So that counts as one of your health, which I'll talk about in a second. But also, when you, you are hands dies, you flip that over, and it may, it may, you may have additional health. So that's at the end of a movie, you know, when the killer comes back to life or the final girl comes back to life. You have that possibility. And just while I'm thinking, final girl obviously refers to it was coined years ago, as in. It's the final girl in a horror film, you know, the one that finds the strength and the courage to take on the, the killer in, in mostly standard horror films. So we've got that extra health potential there. Now we've got health markers we need to put down, which is these. Now, how many? You can see on Laurie's card, it says five. So we've already got one there, and then we need, so we need another four. That's seven point. Hands, we've got that there, his health of 12. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And one more. So again, just to get something get that is you've got eleven of the counters plus that one is an extra health as well. So there's your twelve for hands. So you can see how strong he is straight away. Now we place the bloodlust bloodlust marker at the bottom of the bloodlust track. This is your bloodlust marker, and that's the bottom of the track. 
Now what that is telling us is that this slowly moves up the track, but at the moment, for every boot that appears on a terror can, you'll see, oh look, this will make sense of it. It moves one. For every knife sign, you can see a knife sign there, which again will get explained, he deals two hits. And as you can see, he gets stronger as he goes along. Now I'll place the time marker on the six space. That goes there. And these are used in our action phase again. You'll see this. Place the second killer meeple. This on the red horror um, track. The reason it's going on the number four is because of this. Those signs affect this track. So you'll see ones right there with a line through it, which means it goes down one. If, it's, if you see something the other way around, it goes up one. What effect that has, you can see on there, is how many dice you roll. So at the moment, we're going to be rolling two dice for every action we try. Got that, got that. Shuffle the event cards. There. Draw the top card and follow the instructions on the card. And this is the start of the game. Okay. Can't read that at the minute because I'm holding it under there. So that says Welcome to Camp Happy Trail. Where you'll make memories that will last until you die. Fresh meat. Place two new victims in the cabins. Two new victims at the dock. And two new victims at the fire pit. Right. That's, I would say that's not good. Because Hans gets stronger every time he kills somebody. And it gives us more opportunities to try and save victims. But two at the cabins... Two at the dock. Well, three at the dock, which is right next to Hans, so that is not good at all. And two at the fire pit. We now begin the game with the action phase. So we have a weak attack, so if we're in the same space as Hans, we can try and attack him. A short rest, which can try and gain us some additional health but we're at maximum health enough. we can walk that's what we need we can focus which as you can see would reduce this which gets us towards getting three dice which we want you can walk again and you can focus now each time you've discarded these they can't be collected next time I think I'm going to start confusing things if I start talking too much about that so right, let's see first of all and basically, move them up out of the way. These aren't really used. All I put them on was examples that if you don't have the mat, you put that. And what they're for, oh sorry, no, there's a card. I'm, to, I'm giving you wrong information there. Say there's two, say so you end up with a seven or eight meeples on here, it's getting crowded. You just put that on there and move the meeples into there. So that's what that's for. So I don't know what, I don't know what I was trying to tell you there. Put that on there for now. That might change if we get too many in the backpack. So, at the moment, as you've seen, we can only use two dice. So let's put those down there. And just to show you what I'm doing now, now try and do this quite a bit, is the focus one. Because if we can get a star, or two stars, we drop that down. So, that's the card I'm going to play. We'll put it up there. So I'm going to roll two. In fact, no, I'll say a one and a two is nothing. A five or a six is a star, so which is what we want. A three and a four is that. What that means is if you hand in two other cards, discard them, it turns into a star. So there we've got a star and a blank. So we've got one star. 
that means we can move the focal the hover marker down by one but we also move the timer down by one so we're down to five there and that card has been discarded just leave it there for now what i want to do really now if i can laurie can take these with her as she moves she can take up to a maximum of two because they're all terrified these victims they are willing to follow her the only place they won't follow her is into the space where the killer is so i want to try and get those try and get at least two out here because i want to try and save some straight away so that's my next card so we need at least one star will will get us to there ideally it's two And you can see what we've got there. We've got two cards. Well, what I don't want to do is have nothing because that means I lose, I either lose a health and move one, and the marker, the timer goes down two, or the timer goes down two. I don't want to lose any health at the moment. So, from my four cards I've got left, I don't need a short rest at the moment, and the weak attack, I'm not near hands. I'll get these cards back in a couple of turns, so let's discard those, which means I've now got one star. One star. Oh, sorry. Look at that walk. Is it just to show you? Move one space, and the timer goes down one. So let's move the timer. Uh, sorry, the timer down one, and let's move in into there. Bye. We've got these two. Do I try and walk again? I want to get the focus down. I'm going to save these two because that means I can do these next turn. I can't get these back. In fact, I'll do the other bits first and then you'll see. So these cards stay in my hand and I've still got four timers, four turn. Um, not turns really, I don't even know what they're called, but four on the timer. So what I can do is buy extra cards for next turn from this deck. Any zero cost action cards that are in here, not there because that's a discard pile, I can pick up automatically. So I've got four. What do I want? I want to be able to move. Which I want to get to the cabins at some point for that. I want to be able to move quick. So I've got a walk still in my hand. I've got a sprint here I could have. So I'm going to have a sprint for two. So I can take that. That goes down to two. And I think the guard's quite good and the retaliate quite good for when hands is near you. But not too close to me at the moment, so I'm not bothered about this. I'm going to have another another sprint. I've got plenty of movement I can do at the moment. That goes down to zero. And that is the end of the planning phase. So what happens at the end of the planning phase? The timer goes back to six, ready for next turn. And these in the discard pile go there. So next turn... As I'm doing that planning phase, I can pick all those up. The only caveat to that is you have a maximum of 10 cards in your hand. Um, it's not a massive caveat that because I've only once got to 10 cards. So that is our planning phase done. We're now on to the killer phase. The first thing the killer does, let's move that out of the way for now, is whatever it says here. And it's different for the different games. So on this one, it's got two. It's got the final girl marker and the a victim marker. So it goes after either of those. There's an order in it. I think it's... Um, I think it's always the... If they're in the same square, it's always the victims first before the final girl. There's no movement icon there so all he's doing is if anybody was in that square he would attack once which as you've seen is two hits but there's nobody in there so that's not affecting us the next one 
next phase. And the reason I'm just looking at this bit is I want to make sure I've got phase. Sorry, we're still in the same phase. So that's the first part. Now it's the terror phase. He wants fresh blood. If there are no victims on the board, discard and draw the next terror card. Well, there are. Otherwise, he's going after a victim, so he's not interested in the final goal at the moment. He can move up to two spaces. It can be more, but for each boot, it's just one move. And he's going to attack once in that order. So, what he does here, who's he going to go after? Because, as you can see, I hope, there are... Actually, no. There's no adjacent marker there, so that doesn't come into play. He could either go there or there. So he moves to there. Well, we've got three for him to attack. Not good, but it was... That was always going to happen. He could move further, obviously, but he doesn't need to because he's found his victims there. Now, each victim only has one health. Our final girl, Laurie, has more. These only have one. He can deal two damage, but it's only one attack. So it's one attack on one victim. So although he can do two hits, it's, it's ineffective. It's, it's almost like a frenzy. So he, he's really killed this person. <laughs> so that's our first victim, dead. And the victim goes in the death area. Just two secs. So about that, I was just double checking something. Every time he kills one, the bloodlust goes up. Not actually any effect at the moment. When we get, if he kills another one, that marker goes up. But that is the end of the round. Here's an upkeep phase, but that's something to check once we run out of terror cards, or if there's any special rules come in as well of other cards, it may change. And at this point, if you've got anything in your backpack and your hands, you can rearrange that. But other than that, we are back to the action phase. So I'm ready to go straight, straight back into it. As you see, we've got a lot of... I'm going to try the focus one first. And hopefully you've got the reason for that. It could get the marker down. There. Or do I want to do that yet? Because I might want to discard it. Make sure I get into here. So, yeah. Because ideally, I want to get into there, get two of these, get out of here. So, I'm going to roll for the walk. So, that goes there. So, I could do with two stars. Well, no, I just need one star, actually. Because I'm only moving on. So, what have we got? Yeah. We've got two lots of two. So, I could actually get rid of four cards if I add them. Get one star move there but I, so i'm going to discard the focus and the sprint which is unfortunate and you can see so i move one space because i've got one star because i've got and timer goes down one so that's what i'm doing with the walk so timer down one Lori moves here and she can take two of those with her when she tries to sprint we need a star because if we don't get a star this is going to happen And we haven't got it. So we haven't, I haven't got enough cards to turn. I haven't got any cards left. So this is a bit of a disaster early on. So it's not just that we haven't got any cards. No star. So we take damage. Well, we could move up to one space, which would take us further away. But I'm, I don't want to lose that health at the moment. Because that also means it's the end of our turn. And we dropped down. Oh, actually, do we? It just, mean, it just means it's the end of the turn. It's strange like that because I've taken that to mean you lose all your points, but you actually don't, I don't think, or that you wouldn't have that on it. We are going to lose our health anyway, actually. And it is the end of the turn. So can I do that for no... And move one space. I'm just going to double check that. Right, I've looked what it says in the rules. And it just says the action phase automatically ends. That's all it says. It doesn't say 
that the planning phase, it doesn't say you go down to zero points, it's just throwing me having that there. As though it's as though you'd come down like that. So I am going to play it as though I can use something. I can still use my timers. And then the action phase, phase results in that. Yeah, because otherwise, why would it have a timer thing there if, if down here? Because if you, if it just takes away all your point, uh, all your timer points, there wouldn't be a need for that. So, so yeah, so we lose one health. That's bad. I'm going to move one space, and I'm going to take two of these with me. I've missed something out at the end of the turn. It's the thing I said I kept missing out last turn, so it's not really affected by anything. So I'll come back to that one. And we get, so it goes down by two, and that is the end of our go. We're finished. So we've got to do all those. So I'm going to do the planning phase, but what I've missed out, I keep doing this, is after the killer phase, you have a panic phase. After the killer phase, you must check to see if any victims will panic. Final girl doesn't, but she's tough. A victim will panic if at least one victim was killed this turn. There was. And the victim is in the same space as the killer. So we've got two victims in the same space as the killer. So I should have done this. And I say it's not affecting anything because the what they're gonna do is move one space in a direction so you can see from here we we're there and a one to four see the numbers there there and there a one to four takes them to the lake a five takes them there and a six takes them there. So I'm going to roll twice. It, the victims are the same, obviously. So I'm going to roll both at the same time. So we've got a four and a three. So we one to four. So both of those are going to the lake. And that should have been done straight after Hans's killer phase. So hopefully I'll not miss that again. But I do keep missing it all the time. So we've done our action phase. That was for the last turn we've done that. We've now got three timer points left. Then the disc gap out. We can pick these up, all zeros. We've only got a walk because the sprints are there. So I've got three points. What do I want to have? Let's have a think. I'm going to grab close call lets you re-roll the die or, or all the dice for three I haven't got a lot so I, do I get the search ready for when I get to the cabins which I'm going to try and do in a bit so yeah yeah so I'm going to use two to get the search it's going to go down there and the only one worth one and you can't quite see it down there is the close call marker so that's my other one. So I'm going to take one of those, got those, and these then go back. So the two sprints are back here. Focus on the walk, zero cost ones go there. So that's that done. That's the finish of the planning phase. Now we're back on to the killer phase. So again, I'm going to move that. Now because they panicked, there's nobody in that space, so he doesn't kill anybody in that phase. Good news. Now we turn over the next terror card. Taking souvenirs. If there are no victims on the board, discard and run this. Well, there are. Oh, now this one's a tricky one. This is a very bad start for us. 
Going after a victim, not the final girl. Can move up to two boots. Each boot is worth one movement to the closest one. Well, the only one that's adjacent again, because they're two away. That's two away. These are still adjacent, so he's waded into the lake. But this is where it's bad news. Two attacks this time. Each one does two damage. That's irrelevant. So the first attack. One of those is gone. As you remember, Bloodlust goes up by one. Plus, we're in line with that. So that goes up by one. Remember the card? Plus one Bloodlust as well. So we're up there. Now, there's a second attack. So we've got another one gone. Bloodlust up again. Um, sorry, up that way. I'm getting towards this horror one while they only have one dice. Then, plus one. So, you can now do three damage, movement's up, but also the dark power comes into play. That's the quickest I've had that done. So what does this say? Feed. For every victim that Hans kills, he recovers one heart. Well, we haven't got close to sticking any damage on him yet, so... It's not affecting us a moment. That's a bad start. Now it's the panic phase, which I always forget. Um, but there's nobody, although he's killed, there's nobody in the same area. So that's not a problem. Upkeep phase, nothing to upkeep. So I think what I'll do is one more quick turn, then I'll pause it, and then we'll come back and finish the game in the next turn, in next time. Which may be tomorrow, if I'm still snowed in, but I'm supposed to be away again tomorrow. So look at the snow outside. I don't think I'm going anywhere tomorrow. So first things first, we're going to try and get some of these to here. We're going to try and get a bit back in on here. So what shall we do? We've only got one walk, so we have not got a lot of choices in what I want to do. Fortunately, we've got some cards we can discard, and I've got that close call one, so I can re-roll as well. So let's put that on there for this. Still rolling two dice, getting close to one. We're going to have to try to do something. We've got one. And one star only gets one space. I need to get two here. Unfortunately, I can only take two of these with me. So I want to turn that into another star. I'm going to get rid of... If I kind of want to keep the search one, I might not be able to. But, yeah, I'm going to hand in those two. So we've got two stars, so we can move up to two spaces. And the timer goes down by one. Sorry, I didn't move the timer back to six. Timer goes down by one. We can move two of these, two spaces. And we're on an exit marker, so we've saved two. So what do we want to do with these two? We could take another action card, actually. That might be a good idea. Or we can increase the timer by two, which then gives potential to get a lot of cards for next turn. That might be good as well. Do that there. Get the focus down by one, that might be good. Or we can move one space. Be all right, but... I think what I'm going to do, do I get a heart back as well? I might get a heart back and reduce the horror marker. Because it's getting a bit close to that, I'm getting a bit twitchy there. So that's what I'm going to do. You can just see what I'm doing on the, so I'm going to do that. And that, so we get the health back, and we drop the horror marker down by one. That's that go. I might not have done the right thing there. But, if I can get two stars, I can drop the, the horror marker down again, and up the timer by two. So let's hope for two stars. And I have got enough, I've got a couple of things here. I can re-roll by using this. Or, if I get the cards symbol, I can hand those two in. I don't really want to hand the search one in, though. I've had to pay for that. So we've got one. Now, search is two, so... And there's another search one there, so I could actually 
hand those in, get the two, put the timers up by two, which gives me two extra to get another search one. So I'm doing that. So I'm handing those in, turn that into another star. Oh no, it's not a cards thing, so I ain't got a choice. So no, what do I do here? Do I roll and hope for a five or a six? Yeah, I'm gonna gamble. So I'm handing that one in to re-roll. Well, the search is just gonna stay in my hand for next turn. Just put that there. So I keep the star and I'm re-rolling this one and hoping I get a star, so I need a five or a six. No, so that was a waste of time. So we've got one star, focus down one and time down one. So focus, got that one well down. Time down one, I'm saving the search because there's not a lot I can do with it at the minute. I need to get to the cabins. And put them out of the way. So now at the planning stage, I've got four. So we've got these two cards we can put back in our hand. And what I think I want here is a sprint and a search. Now I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing with the way I'm playing. Obviously I've played three times and I've lost, so. Um, these go back in the pack. I'll just put them there for now. So I've got focus is zero, close call, walk, weak attack, and short rest. Hang on, I didn't need a search with that. I've got sprint with two, I'd kept the search, remember, there. So I didn't need a search. So I've got another two points buy something with. Do I go for another sprint? I think I do. Give myself a bit more movement. Killer's not too close to me, so he's not going to come after me. Or it's unlikely, so I've got two sprints. So my hand for next turn. Sprint, sprint, search, focus, walk. That's what I've got. That's reset. Killer phase. Nobody is in the same spot so it's next to terror card hans wants me he's always wanted me so he's actually coming after me or lorry two boots moves to, equates to four moves and one attack if he reaches me so let's see how close that gets hans to me one to the dock two here, three here, and four here. And that, well, it doesn't raise some interesting possibilities um, because I haven't got, have I? Yeah, I haven't got an attack card. So I was thinking I could move into the same space and go after hands, but I can't because um, I get nothing to hit him with. So, don't mean nothing to hit him with. I don't have to have a weapon, but I um, I can't do any... I've got not, no card to do any damage, so... I was, I, was, I was looking at something else as I was talking and I lost my thread. So that's what we set up today. What I'm, what I'm planning to do in my next turn is get straight past hands, because we can go past him, Get to the cabins, grab that aluminium bat, then either try and escape with those or possibly try and come and batter hands a bit, try and hit him because he's got he's moving quite high up on here. And once he gets high up on the bloodlust marker, it's very difficult. Anyway, we'll see. So that's it today. I hope I've explained all of that. I hope I haven't made any mistakes. Don't think I have, apart from the panic phase. Um, which just sort of jumped ahead. Can't use that because he's got nobody in the same. Well, he hasn't got me in the same space as him. So that just gets wasted. Then you've got the panic phase. If anybody's in there in the same space as him, there isn't. You've got the upkeep phase. If anything you need to sort out, or if the terror cars are But none of that applies at the moment. So we're back to our action phase. Next turn, as I say, hopefully that'll get uploaded quite quickly tomorrow anyway thank you for tuning in i know a couple of you asked specifically about this game as well so i will message you once it's uploaded so you will know that it's there but um if you've enjoyed that please like and subscribe and 
I will be back very soon with the conclusion of this game.